Right now we're flying what I call healthcare airlines, and you may not have flown it yet, but I don't advise you do. It has no instruments, it doesn't know where it's going, it doesn't have a crew, and we're doing it every day. If you ask anyone currently engaged in the U.S. healthcare system, from the hospital CEO to the patient receiving care, no one will be able to agree on the root cause of this blind journey. But they will agree, with a graying population and costs continuing to rise, it seems nearly impossible for America to continue this way. Even before the ballooning costs of looking after the aging population kick in sometime after 2020, I mean, the US healthcare is already incredibly expensive. A about twice the cost of comparable OECD countries without offering uh, better care into the bargain. I mean, the UK, for example, the healthcare system is not perfect, but it's about 8% uh, of economic output. The US I is double that. But the US problems are not just about cost. From the high expectation of patients to the over-servicing of tests and procedures, the country's fee-for-service approach has created a dramatic disconnect between the players in the equation. This is Diane. I'm calling from Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Um, Today, like most days for Diane Flint, okay. will be spent on the telephone. All right. Do you mind if we go over her medications so I can update our files and when you come in tomorrow, they'll already be done? Day after day, she moves through a handful of Dartmouth-Hitchcock Healthcare System's roughly 26,000 Medicaid and Medicare patients inquiring about everything from their post-hospital visits to their prescription intake. But Diane's daily telephone rounds are not just about follow-up care. Her efforts, and that of the 32 pioneer accountable care organizations in the United States, are an attempt to combat the rapidly rising costs of medical care. Launched in 2012, the Pioneer ACO model, an initiative under Obama's Affordable Care Act, aims to coordinate care and ultimately lower costs. While somewhat of a lofty goal, if they are indeed successful, the effort may also alter some of the fundamental tenets of healthcare in America. But getting there will be a long and potentially contentious journey. If you do well on all of the 33 quality measures and you hit your cost target, you can sh sa share in the savings. In New Hampshire, the difficult task of overseeing and explaining this new model of healthcare usually falls upon Dartmouth Hitchcock Chief Executive Dr. James Weinstein. Recently, he presented his plan to the New Hampshire State Senate. These contracts, these ACOs, are all about taking risk on the provider side. What the federal government hopes that this risk incentive program will save $1.1 billion in health care spending over the next five years. The logic being that if the emphasis is on thorough, top-to-bottom health management, it will keep patients away from emergency rooms and out of hospitals. On the surface, Diane's efforts and that of the other ACO systems seem to be reminiscent of an older style of medicine, as the ACOs require care coordinators to maintain a detailed and personal relationship with their patients, and at times even visit them in their homes. The personal attention to detail is primarily about efficiency and, more importantly, data. How are you? So we get, with the patient's permission, complete data about um, all of the doctors that they see and or see, not just me, one doctor that they're seeing. So what would you rate your pain between one to 10, 10 being the worst? Oh, sometimes it's up there at eight and nine. And so you can take that data and you can, and you can look at it and in such a way that you can say, well, a person with a combination of these many kinds of diseases on these many medications is at more risk than a person with these many diseases with these lab results and these medications. And you can allocate your resources in a focused way to your scarce resources. And therein lies the grand question for the ACO effort, and really for the entire U.S. healthcare system. For the doctors and hospitals, it's an alteration to the revenue structure. For the patient, it's an entrance into a more centralized, data-driven health system. So the question becomes, will the players be willing to concede? It's not a panacea. I think it's an attempt to put some constraints on a system out of control. But I think until we have true transparency across all systems, then the consumer can judge, just like we do in every other business. In a digital era, it seems only logical to have a far more coordinated, data-driven approach. But given the current disconnect between the players and the country's care systems, regardless of the program's efficacy, there is a real possibility that the ACO model ends up as just another loop in the Gordian knot that is American healthcare. Christopher Booker, Financial Times, Manchester, New Hampshire.